Goodbye 2018 and hello 2019. As you can see, we finally end, end 2018. And it's time for me to do uh, uh, something typical that every movie fan do who likes to film themselves in front of the camera. And that is to, to, to reminisce and see which are the best movies that they saw. Which, uh, which are the movies that it touch our hearts and make us feel very happy. And I am no exception. I, I, I just decided to pick up and look at what are the best movies that I saw in 2018. And before I start telling that list, I want to tell you that this is mostly a personal list. Trying to be a little bit semi-professional in a way. Uh, again, I'm talking in front of the camera without the script. And I also want to let you know that I didn't watch a lot of drama films this this uh, this year, which is interesting. I, I uh, because I I usually tend to watch at least one or two during the course of the of the of a year, but not this time. I felt like. I just decided to go to some mainstream one, so I apologize if I didn't see uh, movies that kind of become uh, are going to become probably Oscar-worthy material like Black Klansman or A Star Is, Bo is Born. I know I'm hearing a lot of good things about some some of these kind of movies, but I don't think that this year I, I did give them that opportunity. This, this, I just only can watch at least one or two movies per week. So, or sometimes I didn't, I didn't feel like it. So, I'm sorry if there's a movie that, uh, that you might have seen, but I didn't. I mean, I'm just a single human being. I can't watch all the movies of the world. But, but well, right now, while uh, I don't know if you're looking, if you're looking, but my sis, my sister and my husband. And her husband are watching Gladiator upstairs. I, I, so excuse if there's some noise of, of, over there. <laughs> what a qu uh, how convenient. But and, but anyway, uh, let's uh, let's let's start this list by first of all giving an honorary mention to at least three movies which didn't make it out on the list probably because I. I didn't know where to put them, but I like them kind of enough to uh, to at least show uh, uh, put them there. Uh, some some of them I was kind of hurt to not to not put them, but trust me, I, it uh, like every other list, there's always one winner and one loser, or sometimes there is a winner, but we, we, uh, but there is there wasn't enough. So let's go with my first honorary mention. Honorary Best Movie of the Year, number one, is none other than A Quiet Place. A Quiet Place is one of those movies that I I thought that while I really liked how uh, that this movie is most of it quiet, uh, uh, they, they have almost no dialogue, uh, they had a great premise that involves a, uh, a family, uh, a family just trying to survive apparently uh, some kind of apocalypse with 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 creatures that are uh, that are very sensitive to the hearing it it just puts you in a really really big thrill and the reason why i put it on uh, at least on the honorary list and couldn't make it on the best is that is that the moment that ruined the movie at least personally for me is when they go to a place and they finally t talk I know there is dialogue in the movie, even though it is minimalist. I just wish that they could, they didn't do that. I wish they could just stay shut up for for a while. So uh, when they started talking, I thought that you're ruining it. I thought that we were gonna get a movie that is 100% silent, but they didn't do it. They couldn't resist to open their mouths. And well, that's this is why uh, this is why it's my first honorary list. The first, the, the first, the second honorary best. Um, uh, it took me a while to to uh, to put it there, but when I 
but then I thought that maybe I should put it, put it at least to mention Annihilation. This is one of those movies that, to be honest, it kind of confused me, and it can be easily forgotten. I almost forgot this movie until, until I, I was beginning to think that, yeah, there were some things that I actually kind of, well, like, you know, in a way. For example, it kind of reminded me that there is this amazing, thrilling scene with the bear, and a premise that, when you think about it, it, it somehow it feels parallel to one of my favorite RPGs, which is none other than Shin Megami Tensei's Strange Journey. And and well, and well, I I it I got a little bit of issues with the with the, with the ending, but I'm not. I, but I'll say that it was it was a movie that it can be a little bit pretentious in a way, but it kind of earned it. It earned that pretentiousness. I, I and but most of it I, I I felt that I forgot about it. But still but either way I, I cannot deny that if if this movie kind of sparks in my mind uh, maybe I will I'll give it some credit for for trying something that is is being interesting. And for the third honorary mention this is probably going to be a little bit of a bad movie in a way but I just put it up there, just because how crazy this movie is. And that movie is not other than Assassination Nation. I'm not gonna lie, when I, when I got out of this film, with, I just watched it with a friend. And we were both baffled, um, what the frick we just watched? I mean, this, this is technically SJW Witch Hunt film if it becomes totally extreme and for what it is I can I'm gonna say that this is movie I don't I don't know if it deserves to be in an honorary best or honorary worst but I'll say I'll definitely say that it's the honorary craziest man that this movie has lots of problems in a way, but we kind of love some some of the, uh, the reaction that we just had, and because of that experience, I I just I just had to put it and mention that maybe it's not the best, but it's probably probably one of the weirdest movie experiences I have ever watched, at least in this year. So anyway, are you ready, Spencer? Now it's time to tell everyone which is my my top 10 best movies of 2018 with a small summary of where these movies stand and why they're on my top, top 10. So, ready Spencer again? Let's, let's go. Um, my first one on the list. Number 10 is Aquaman. I'm really, really surprised that a DC movie barely managed to be to become one of my favorite movies on the uh, on of uh, this year. Um, I do, like I said in my in my previous review, I do have a bone to pick up with the DC Cinematic Universe because they ha really had a really, really, really bad start, and unfortunately, they uh, they're not. Uh, the 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 Warner Brothers stubbornness. They're refusing to let it die and start over, which honestly it hurt a lot, uh, a lot of it. But either way, I just uh, uh, Aquaman really stand out as becoming one of the one of probably one of the best DC DC cinematic universe um, movies that came out because it's. It has a it has a well structured story. It it feels epic. It feels heroic in a way, and and it gives a lot of respect to Ac to Aquaman. The only thing that kind of stains this movie is that they keep referencing that uh, that uh, that piece of shit uh, uh, Justice League film. And, and again, I just really like that that there, that face of Aquaman just kind of brush it off, saying that oh fuck, don't remind me that. But, but at least 
uh, um, to manage at least to put it on the list, I'll give it a, my applause. But unfortunately, they're still really, really greedy and eager to keep on doing more of these movies. I don't care if Aquaman was successful. I don't care if it was good. WB, please stop. Uh, please stop with that cinematic universe. Try again. This one, I think it failed because just like an architecture, if the base is 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 damaged, it cannot support the it cannot support the rest of the building. So please let it die. But still, we got that we have to deal with Shazam next uh, next year. This one looks comedic, uh, but we'll see what happens. Let's get on with it. Um, number nine. It it actually came out uh probably one of the one of my the biggest reboot slash remakes. Uh, it's not a remake. One of the one of the biggest I mean, let's say that rebooting sequels that took me by surprise. I'm talking about Halloween. Halloween is one of another one of those movies that. Is that I had very very little faith, considering the history of the Halloween films. Um, I thought that this is a movie. I thought that this was gonna also be destined to fail, but to my surprise, it became probably one of the best Halloween sequels there is, which ignores all the previous Halloween films and finally does uh, make up for it. The things that work a little very well is that it doesn't one hundred it doesn't one hundred percent rehashes the Halloween plot. It keeps it kind of like the same, familiar, but fresh enough to keep us you know, keep us on the edge of the seat. Uh, Michael Myers really it really stand out and show that despite his age, he's still a force to reckon. It, we, it doesn't try to understand the killer in a way, uh, and, and, but maybe we try to understand what is his motivation, but I'm glad that they kept it vague. The other sequel, they tried to give it kind of like an excuse saying that, oh, probably he has a curse or a bad childhood, which it doesn't work that way. And uh, uh, But this one uh, kept what we know about Michael Myers. He just someone who is just evil. He just does it because he doesn't know. Well, nobody knows. We then that's that's the horror of a real serial killer. And um, in 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 my personal opinion, I think that Jamie Lee Curtis does deserve to be nominated for an Oscar because her age, her age, and her doesn't stop doesn't stop her to to give out a great performance of a paranoid. Uh, uh, what was it? What was the uh, what was the name? Uh, uh, it escaped me. Uh, it it, it uh, she 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 made a uh, her role was very paranoid, but still capable to uh, get, to fight for her life and her friends and her family to uh, to protect them from uh, a serial killer who might escape. Now that I think of it, it's kind of like Al Gore trying to warn us about global warming. Warming, but but either way, Halloween is one of, probably one of my biggest surprises of this year. And now we go with number eight. Uh, number eight, uh, I kind of felt reluctant to put it there because because of a little bit of a personal taste, but I can't deny that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is is a good movie, even though it comes from a, a very shitty animation company that is Sony. Again, I do have a bone to pick up with Sony Animation Studios, but when they, when they do right, they do right. And, and this one, it became probably one of the most stylish anim, a, a, animated films, and not only on, on the Sony on Animation Studios, but also in the Marvel Universe. Well, this one doesn't go into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, no matter how much you try to put the pieces together. And uh, and the reason why I felt reluctant to put it, and also reluctant to technically like it, is that I'm not a big fan of Miles Morales as Spider-Man. 
but honestly, this this movie kind of helped me out, give it a lot of respect to the characters. I'm not exactly a big fan of of Peter Parker getting killed or trying to kill off, you know, the Tobey Maguire Peter Parker. Um, uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a hot, hot soft spot for me because I'm very used to Peter Parker as Spider-Man. But I can't deny that this movie really, really not only push up the action but also push up uh, and the and the character development department like this. And every single character has a little bit of a moment to shine in a in a way while building the uh, building the uh, the. You know, the new responsibilities that Miles Morales has to deal now that he inherits the powers of Spider-Man. And to make this movie a little bit more heartbreaking, we do one of the few last recordings of Stan Lee. Uh, and ironically, or no, coincidentally, Stan Lee is uh, last, uh, uh, when he talks in the, in the movie, it felt that... It, it represented himself um I can't I can't deny that that uh, that small tribute in the mid credit after uh, as a mid credit sequence in the film it it was indeed something that put me in tears and a little bit in my eyes so so with that said this is why spider-man into the spider-verse really deserve to be on this spot on, on my top 10 list of the best of 2018. Oh boy! You know, if it wasn't for my sister's husband, I don't think that, that this movie would have at least put it on my number 7 of my list. And that movie is none other than Mission Impossible Fallout. I probably might might see in many people why is this movie isn't higher on my list, and the reason is that I'm not exactly a big fan of Mission Impossible, and honestly, the only movie I saw before Mission Impossible Fallout was not only than Mission Impossible Three, but that one I watch it just because I just watch it and that's it. I didn't buy, I didn't even watch the first one, the second one, and and Ghost Protocol. Uh, the, uh, the, I was, I'm technically zero knowledgeable on, on the Mission Impossible films and the Mission Impossible lore. But at least I will say that the video game, uh, the and Nintendo 64 game in the early, in my early age, um, it kind of helped me a little bit uh, know about Ethan Hunt. And, well, despite that, I'm not gonna deny that. Mission Impossible Fallout was a great, a great action film. It, woo, it, it was so thrilling that it put me on the edge of the seat. And to, in my personal opinion, I, I instead I I will call Mission Impossible Fallout actually Mission Impossible Redemption because for some reason this movie makes up for all the bullshit that. That Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill did to us last uh, last year. I mean, I mean, Tom Cruise gave us the Mummy, which sucked, and Henry Cavill participated on on Justice League, which sucked. And and now that they're in these movies, it kind of shows that 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 it's not their fault that their movies suck. Is is. Technically, the writers' department, because when they do great, they do great. Uh, Tom Cruise shows that he, despite his age, he can still do st stunt work. He's kind of like an American Jackie Chan. Okay, not to that extreme. And Henry Cavill, he's a good actor. He's a good actor, but man, I just, I, it would be great to see him in some, some other works. Um... Uh, but even without the knowledge of Mission Impossible, I had a really, really good fun. And I can see why, even to, up to this day, th there's still people who like watching. I like watching Mission Impossible. It's a movie that, again, I never had plans to watch it. But, but my sister's husband, he was a big fan. And he just said, hey, uh, come on, let's go watch Mission Impossible. I, I want to watch Mission Impossible. 
Okay, I'll accompany you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I would. I don't know if if the number seven spot will will, will have been empty without without you. And continuing on, um, let's see, number six, and um, this one again is not gonna be in many lists, but again, but this is my personal list. It's something that that is very very personal. But number six is pretty much a standard movie, but I gotta admire how standard it was. That movie is, oh dear, I think I'm going to hell. Yep, Hellfest. Uh, Hellfest is is a movie that it's it it I don't know if it was low budget but or big budget, but I admire how almost zero CGI it needed. I mean, for those who doesn't know, basically it's just it it it's like some people they go to uh you know I kind of, what would you what would you get if Universal Studios decide to have a Halloween party. Uh, but some serial killer, they, he wants to celebrate it to the max by stalking a, 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 hit, a group of prey and and kill them. And and the cool thing about this is that it takes a Black Christmas route in which it we don't see the killer's face. It doesn't even talk. It's just and it doesn't exactly show exact reason why. I, why he just he just picked the pick those people he just it just some guy who just picked at random and that's it but during the whole movie I can't deny that it puts me on the edge of the seat it put me uh, it puts me it, it was like wondering how dear when he's gonna strike what he's gonna do how and trying to and also it doesn't help that since everybody's wearing a mask, everyone is, everyone is, is a makeup. Uh, it is hard to pinpoint, uh, uh, it, it, it will be hard for, the, for our, uh, he well, heroes to pinpoint uh, uh, where, uh, how to capture that guy and, and, that, and that thing. So it's technically a little bit of a, it follows the tropes of a slasher film, but at the same time it it doesn't. Also, it helps that the, our characters, they're not exactly unlikable. They have a little bit of douchiness in a way, but not not something to, uh, to be very, very angry. And, but because of the thrill that it gave me, I think that uh, that Hellfest managed to at least become part of, uh, of, of my top 10 of the list. So again, uh, if, if you if, if you're against it, uh, maybe you're gonna see me going to hell. Oh, and, and I've also I also forgot to mention that uh, that the whole haunted house practic uh, practical effects and all this stuff they look awesome. I wish more a, a lot of a lot of Halloween parties that, um, that are mainstream are like that. Okay, let's continue on. Um, number five. Well, another horror movie. I think horror movies are were very good on this year. Yeah, at least in my opinion. But this one is probably one of those that is very, very horror-y. Oh dear. Um, hereditary. Hereditary. Oh man, uh, if there's a few movies that make me a little bit uncomfortable, it's none other than this one. Um, the trailer was scary enough, and from the, I, I think I don't remember, but maybe they come from the same studios that and the same guys who who created The Witch, which is which became one of the most scariest movies I have seen on, on that year. And Hereditary, man, that it in a way. It kind of felt like a great psychological study about grief, about a grudge, anger, and it and it kind of shows that uh, that sometimes uh, some those we do have some horrible hidden feelings behind on our families that we just don't want to admit. Even though this movie is a little, uh, it shows that it is kind of held by some supernatural demonic cult or 
or and something like that. Yeah, we can't deny that even us as humans, we we do kind of have the hatred to the people that we love and. Uh, in this case, like for example, there is we can show that there is that no matter what it is, uh, mothers do have some kind of hidden hatred to their children. Uh, uh, man, that uh, when when things go wrong, it's totally shocking. It's disturbing. It's disturbing and. And everything starts with the death of a grandmother that and that also encapsulates the death of this of this child who dies who dies in, in in an act in an accident by the irresponsibility of of a teenage boy and the and the irresponsible uh and the well totalitarian command of um of a mother who and nobody wants to admit their own fault. And the and and the father trying to uh, kind of playing this straight man. Uh, I think I did talk about this movie how it made me un uncomfortable, but in a good way. And the ending, man, that it kind of brings out some questions, but we can't deny that it's both confusing, but yet disturbing and. This is this is one of those movies that you're gonna get at least uh, you're gonna get once in a while to to be scared and for me this is this is the good mark of a true genuine horror horror movie horror movie it should be disturbing no super jump scare whatever it, it is you have to earn that in a, in a way so and with that said and uh, Her uh, hereditary became one of the best movies that I have seen this year. Um, number four, I hope you go to, you go to hug your, your, your dog. And that is none other than, than Alpha. Um, Alpha. Alpha is one of the few heartwarming movies I have seen. Despite that, it kind of started out with the, with the bullshit of three weeks, uh, three weeks later, uh, later thing. The movie earns its reputation about a, a journey of a, of a teenage boy who who they who he survive he survives a uh, well a hunting accident. Everyone thinks they're dead, but he managed to survive, and he go he technically has to team up with a wolf that they begun to bond, and and they all decide that they have uh, that in order to return home, he has to deal with his instinct. It's kind of like it's kind of like a good version of a uh, 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 nothing nothing. I just came out out of my head. I just talked before I wanted to talk. But the point is that we kind of endured this journey. It, it, the relationship between the boy and the dog is is great. As a guy who used, uh, even though I'm I'm much of a cat lover, I can't deny that that. The, the the thrilling moments that this movie act has are effective the 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 bonding between the boy and the dog is is great and i'm glad that it does have a it has a very really really earned happy ending i even though we are in in, in a world in which we kind of are a little bit cynical this movie isn't and for something that was delayed, uh, uh, this is one of those few examples that maybe it will happen, maybe it is delayed, but that doesn't mean that it, it's gonna come out as pretty bad. And I'm very grateful. This book, uh, Alpha, is it, it was a big winner for for this year. And number three is the most mainstream of all the winners, and this one is gonna top a lot of of, of the uh, of the list. And that is none other than, well, why not? Avengers: Infinity Wars. Oh dear, this one. I will say that this one has a weird experience because 
Uh, you know that usually, usually you're gonna say that a movie is great when you get a, uh, when you finish the movie and you get a, uh, get get out of the movie theater uh, feeling really excited, really happy. This one has the opposite effect. This is a movie that you go out and when that when you go watch the movie, you get out of that theater angry, hateful. Sad? You feel terrible! <laughs> the, and these are signs of a bad movie, but not in this case! Because it earned that, and it was, and that was the intention, of course. I mean, because it, first of all, it is the typical Avenger film, and it, it was built up to many years to this one, in which we finally have the Avengers going t against Thanos. And Thanos really proved that he is one of the best villains of the, not only the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but in general. It has his motivation, but uh, even his motivations are... are despicable. It has that kind of like a great area. A and we have those... Um, it felt like the what we were building up, building. I mean, we have all almost the, all the pieces, the the Black Panther parts, the the Captain America part, the the Iron Man part, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh man! But then the ending, the ending, the ending, which is break our hearts. Our hearts was. Totally twisted, so much that that I think that ever since that moment, I've seen little children cuss illegitimately. Everybody on the screen were like, "Fuck you, Thanos!" And that moment returned when I went to see Ant uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. When they they uh, they find we got the ending we we finally get to the point where Infinity War happened, and an uh, eight year old girls scream "Fuck you, Thanos!" Oh fuck you, Thanos should be a meme at this moment, but despite that, uh, Infinity War a gr it was great. It it came up to this. Uh, now we're gonna build up to see how they're gonna uh, how they're gonna deal with uh, with this whole with this whole garbage that Thanos gave up. It's time for revenge now, so we're gonna get ready for a rematch against Thanos and save the, the half of the of the universe. But in the meantime, I have to continue on with that list because now we got number two, and number two is. Probably the only drama film that I actually went to see, and that is Searching. Searching, um, in, uh, in a way, it got me curious because it it kind of took the route uh, that Unfriended has has done, and you know that the whole movie we put it on the perspective of a uh, of of a computer screen, and we have some uh, some douchebags just. Uh, just doing their Skype chats and then, and then you know, ghost ghost things. But searching managed to create a movie that kind of felt like the mixture between Pixar's Up and Finding Nemo. And I like this movie better than Finding Nemo, just in case. Uh, yeah, I think Finding Nemo is overrated. But the thing is that the whole movie we just. We just it, it just folk we just see the point of view of not just one uh, one screen but various kind of screens and it felt like a collage of things that it that that how social media grow and how how we deal with it and in this case case in point we just see the whole ordeal of a father trying to find his his missing daughter and, and how the police how the police can't help him. How social media kind of doesn't take him seriously, seriously, uh, and and the weird things that 
nobody thinks that they knew his daughter and the confusion and the desperation of that father is heartbreaking and and man his we just feel his ordeal we just see him uh, going through all kind of of communication devices that we uh, that we see and you know, going through sky uh, trying to find clues and everything uh, it, it this movie shows in a way the benefits and the deceit that uh, that social media has uh, in which it in we in which in a way also it turns it it shows the dark side of the of the uh, of social media and and not not only that but how people use it I'm not gonna exactly reveal the twist there is, but there is a twist that that makes a lot of a lot of sense. But in the mean, uh, but in the meantime, I uh, 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 searching it. Let's say that is kind of like a great way to show that even a gimmick, a gimmick that was started by this unfriended film, can be turned into something that. Uh, something to create a very basic but yet good way to Im immerse ourselves into the problems of a uh, of of a good fa a, a good father looking for his daughter. And well, after that, I think it is time to tell you my number one movie of the year. And nobody will agree with me. I know that this movie is not gonna be there, but I, I it's my personal list. And I had to put it because this is the only movie that that made me feel both epic, Oscar worthy, uh, with a little bit of a gimmick that is overused. It's a very cliche movie, but somehow it felt like it deserves to become a kind of well. It is my Oscar worthy nomination in my head. <laughs> that movie is. Overlord. Ah, oh, for some reason, this when I when I was watching this movie, I for some reason I have I felt like I was watching an Oscar bait film. And how did it man? How did a movie that is just a World War Two film with zombies felt like a legitimate war film? And man, that because of that. I just felt just very, very happy with it. I know it's not a great film for many. It's not gonna, it's not gonna top anything. But personally, I just had to put it. Uh, imagine that. It's, it's, it again. It, it, it. Imagine if this is just a movie that it felt like just like a World War Two movie. But imagine if they, if they did this, they, they decide to. Of the exaggerated versions of the Nazi experimentations, but they want to deal with zombies, with some great effects, some characters that you care despite the despite their personalities. Uh, they do some dumb decisions, but they're not as dumb as a typical horror film. The the production value is great. Uh, even the intro, which it feels like, uh, like. Like a version of Saving Private Ryan, but in the air, but still works. I, I, I just, I just felt that this is the mo movie I had the most fun and the most that I remember. And again, it's just a zombie film. It, it when it, it kind of, it kind of felt like it earned its ridiculousness. It, it's, it's Call of Duty zombie version a movie. And, and I don't play Call of Duty. I have nothing much to say. Because this movie doesn't let you say much. It's just zombies. Just zombies. World War II zombies. What else, what else there is? Maybe I'm just sick. I don't care. Overlord is, is probably my best movie of the year. Again, I'm sorry I didn't watch movies that should be... It should be morally or, or morally supportive or something very uh, uh, very emotionally supportive. Like, again, like Black Clansman or A Star is Born or some of those drama films. 
I didn't give myself the chance, so I apologize. But in the meantime, for a film buff like me, uh, Overlord is my number one movie of the year. And that's it. Uh, number, that's are the best movies of 2018. And, and well, I'm gl uh, let's see what 2019 is gonna, uh, they're gonna give us. So, let's, let's finish it, this up with, what do you say? Oh, I forgot. When there's the best, there's also the worst. Tune in next time.